Hi, hey you guys. So this is the start of unit seven, which is solving a system of equations. And a system of equations is just two or more equations. Uh, and there's multiple ways of solving it. The first one is 7.1, which is solving by graphing. 7.2 would be solving by substitution and 7.3 would be solving by elimination. Um, so you'll see the different ways of how to solve it and which way would be most beneficial and, and the fastest. But um, for 7.1, we're gonna solve by graphing. And what we're going to do is graph the two equations and look for the intersection. And then you got to check that it is a solution. And I'll show you what I mean as we do it. So if you look here, we have two equations. So the first one is y equals 2x minus 3. And since it's in slope-intercept form, I can start at negative 3, which is the y-intercept. And my slope is 2, so I'm going to go up 2 and over 1 and down 2 and over 1. And... I'm going to graph the, the red one. And I'm not drawing the line yet because I want you to see what I'm doing. Um, so the y-intercept is negative 1. And my slope is 1 because remember, there's an invisible 1 here. So I would go up 1 over 1 and down 1 over 1. And you can see that they have not overlapped yet. So I wanna, what I want to do is keep going. So I can keep going with the red if I want to this way. And I'm going to draw my line. And then I need to do the same with the green. So if I can go up two over one, and if I went up two over one, I can see that it actually crossed or intersect, intersected right there. Okay. So what you want to do on your graph is circle this point and write the coordinates. So it's two comma one. And so your answer, your solution to the system is two comma one. And what you want to do is do a visual check because you'll see it down here. Check your solution with a visual check. This, the X, I'm going to use different colors. The X is your two or two is your X and your one is your Y. So if you put the two in here into this equation for the X and the one here, visually you get one is equal to four minus three, which is true. So that one works out. And if you put a two in here, and a one here, you get one is equal to two minus one, which is one, which is true. So that's how you would do your visual check to make sure that those are correct. Okay. Another way they might ask you is backwards. So um, instead of graphing it, they might ask you this way. Is two comma one a solution of y is equal to two x minus three and y is equal to x minus one? So you would do what I just did in a way, but you would do it algebraically. So you would take the two and put it in for the x, because this is your x and your y. Put your 2 here, put your 1 here, and you'll get 1 is equal to 4 minus 3. 1 is equal to 1, so it is true. And then you would put your 2 here and your 1 here again, you get 1 is equal to 2 minus 1, and 1 is equal to 1, so it's true. Okay, it, in order for this to be a solution, it has to be true for both equations. If it's true for only one equation, then it is not a solution. Okay, or neither solution or neither equations. It has to be true for both. So in this case, the answer is yes. And we kind of proved it by graphing. But again, they might ask you a question this way, or they might say solve it this way. Okay, so you just got two different ways of doing that. So here's another another example. So if we were to solve, uh, sorry, graph the green, it's y equals one fourth x plus seven. So you start at seven, which is your y intercept. Your slope is rise one, run four rise negative one, one, run negative four. And so there's your graph there. And for the red equation, since it's in standard form, you can change it into slope intercept form, or you can put your, you can use X and Y intercepts to graph this. Um, I'm gonna do the X and Y intercepts. So if you remember for the X intercept, Y is equal to zero. So I can just say three X is equal to 12, X is equal to four. So it's four comma zero. So I put four comma zero for my x-intercept. And for my y-intercept, x is equal to zero. So I can say four y is equal to 12. Y is equal to three, so it's zero comma three. Okay. And you can see they did not intersect yet. But if you look from this dot to this dot, I went up four and left three. I'm sorry, up three, left four. So if I go up three and left four again, using the same slope, I would intersect at that line there. So when I draw my lines,
I can see my intersection is here. I would circle that and I would put negative four comma six as my solution. And I want, I want to do a visual check. So what I want to do is put this X and this Y into this equation. So if I put into this, the top green equation first, if I put a negative four here and a six here, I get six is equal to one fourth times negative four is negative one plus seven. So negative one plus seven is six. So that one is true. And if I put a negative four here and a six here, I get negative 12 plus 24 is equal to positive 12. And that is true. So I did a visual check. So that is true. So negative four comma six is my solution of those equations. Okay, so that's how you can do your visual check. So graph both equations, find the intersection, keep going until they intersect somewhere because they will intersect somewhere and then do a visual check to make sure that that is a solution, that it's true for both equations. Okay, um, another thing you're gonna find is writing a system of equations and then e interpret the data. So the first part is writing the equation. So in this case, a coil tree is four meters tall and grows three meters per day. So when you see per day, oops, um, when you see this per day, that's probably gonna be your slope. Okay, in most cases, when you say per something or something each, that's gonna be your slope. So for the coa tree, it starts at four meters. So y is equal to four plus and three x, if x is the number of days. Okay, and if you wanna write it into correct slope intercept form, you can rewrite it as three x plus four. Okay, for the coconut tree, it's y is equal to, and it's two meters tall and grows four meters per day. So two meters tall, four meters per day, and you can rewrite it again as four x plus two. So when we graph these, the coa tree starts at four and it grows three per day. So up three over one per day, up three over one per day, and it is not labeled, but this should be number of days on the x-axis, and on the y-axis, it should be the height in meters. Okay, so it went up um, three meters for each day. For the coconut tree, oh, sorry, let's put the line. So this is your coa, that's your coa line, your graph. For the coconut, it starts at two. So it's two meters when it starts and it goes up four meters per day. So it goes four meters in one day, four meters in one day. And you can see the intersect over there. And I just put the C for coconut you can see the red. Okay, so we graph the equations. Now, when we interpret the data, what we can see is, um, at the start, at zero days, the coa tree is two meters taller. After one day, it's only one meter taller than the coconut tree. And after two days, they are both 10 meters tall, they're equal. But after two days, the coconut tree is gonna be taller than the coa tree because it grows faster. Okay. So that's kind of how you would um, graph it and interpret the data. So after two days, they're equal, but after, after two days, three days or more, the coconut tree, because it grows faster, will be taller. Okay. There's also some different finding number of solutions. There's special cases. So in this case, you can see a system of equation with no solutions. If you look at this, the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different. The slopes are the same, y-intercepts are different. So if we were to graph this, if I graph 2x plus 1, I would have start at 1, 2x this, your slope is two. So it would look like this. And if I graph the two X minus one in red, it would be here, up two over one, down two over one. And you can see, because they have the same slope, you have parallel lines. And when you're solving for a solution, you're looking for the intersection of the two lines. What, what point do they have in common? And if they're parallel lines, they have no point in common because they never intersect. And that's why you would have no solutions. Okay, so if you ever have parallel lines, you're gonna have no solutions. Okay, the next special case would be something like this. So, so if I were to graph the green equation, y equals half x plus two, I would start at two, 
rise one, run two, rise negative one, run negative two, and it would look like this. When I graph the red equation, if I wanted to change that into slope intercept, I would minus two X from both sides. This would be gone and I'll get negative four Y is equal to negative two X minus eight. When I divide this by negative four, and again, you got to divide each term by negative four, I would get Y is equal to one half X plus two. And if you look, it's actually the same equation. So when I graph it, I would actually have the same dots and the same line. And so when you do this, just for your sake and for mine that we can see it, go ahead and do double arrows. So you can see there's two arrows on each. There's a green and a red arrow. So just go ahead and um, I'll do it with green. Do a double arrow so you can see that it's a line on top of a line. Okay, and that means it's infinite solutions because it's a line on top of a line. And so any point on this line, wherever any point is a solution of both equations because it's a point on both lines. And the line goes on forever and ever in both directions. So that's why it's infinite solutions because it, it just keeps going on. So any point on the line. Now, any point off of the line, like over here, oops, over here, over here, any point off the line is not a solution. So it's not saying any point period. It's just any point on the line would be a solution that goes on forever. Okay, so a quick recap of these is that if you have a system of equation that has different slopes, they eventually will cross somehow, whether it goes like this or something. When you have different slopes, you are going to cross, you're going to have one solution. Okay, so when you have different slopes, you're going to have one solution. So even in this case on the right with the negative four and the one half, you're going to have a negative four sloping line and you're going to have a one half sloping line is somewhere they're going to intersect. Okay. Um, for no solutions, if they have same slope, but different y-intercepts, so same slope as in seven, different y-intercepts, plus or minus 11, same slope is one, negative eight, negative nine. If you have same slope, but different y-intercepts, they're parallel lines, you're gonna have no solutions. If you remember parallel is like two two lines like that. And, uh, and then the last part is, if you have the same slope, so like two and, ah, in this case, I'm gonna rewrite it. This one, if I add, if I minus three X over, ooh, I should do it in red so you can see it, hold on. If I minus three X over to this side, I would get y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. So you can see that these are two same equations. So if you had, they have the same slope, okay, and the same y-intercept, plus 1, and then you have plus 4, plus 4, same slope, then you will have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so what you're either going to have one solution, no solution, or infinite number of solutions. Um, 7.2 will be solving by system, solving a system by substitution. 7.3 will be solving by elimination. And we'll get into those. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hoped this video helped.